Welcome back. Continuing on from the discussion of strain gauges, in this video we will focus on bondage strain gauges and their placement in Wheatstone bridges. A Wheatstone bridge is a differential combination of two voltage dividers. Typically, one of the legs of the Wheatstone bridge has an unknown resistance. By balancing the two legs, the unknown electrical resistance can be determined. These are useful because they offer a linear relationship, zero offset, high sensitivity, and can be temperature compensated, meaning the temperature doesn't affect the reading because the dependence of the resistance of the strain gauge on temperature is canceled out by an equal and opposite dependence of another strain gauge. In a balanced Wheatstone bridge, the ratio of R1 over R2 and R3 over R4 are equal, making the output voltage zero. For the maximum sensitivity, the values of the resistors are equal. A Wheatstone bridge is governed by the following relationship built by the two voltage dividers. R3 divided by the sum of R3 and R4 minus R1 divided by the sum of R1 and R2 multiplied together by the voltage source. Note that any of these resistors can be strain gauges. Let's say R3 is a strain gauge as indicated by a box around the resistor and a change in notation to RG. This example now has a single strain gauge. The previous equation can be changed to reflect whatever the strain gauge resistance is equal to. In the case of RG equals RNOM times 1 plus GE, the equation for the Wheatstone bridge becomes V0 equals RNOM times 1 plus GE divided by RNOM times 1 plus GE plus R4 minus R1 divided by R1 plus R2, all times the voltage source. Assuming the strain is less than less than 1, the sensitivity to strain dV0 divided by dE can be determined by taking the derivative of V0 with respect to strain, which is shown in this first equation. You can then plug strain in as 0. Simplifying this by multiplying out the numerator yields the final third equation. Setting all these resistors to be equal to each other to achieve the maximum sensitivity, the equation simplifies again to be sensitivity is equal to GVS divided by 4. If temperature were included in the strain gauge resistance, it would not be compensated because it would not cancel out. If we take this same approach, we can similarly find the sensitivities to strain for Wheatstone bridges with multiple strain gauges. Say there are now strain gauges in the R1 and R3 spots of the Wheatstone bridge, again as indicated by the boxes around the resistors. If we use the same equation as before, R1 is equal to R3, which is equal to RNOM times the sum of 1 plus the gauge factor multiplied by strain. Plugging these values into the equation for the Wheatstone bridge, we find that V out is equal to the following equation. As an exercise, determine the sensitivity to strain. It is shown here that dV0 divided by d strain is equal to 1 half the gauge factor times the voltage source. This is really an example of a differentially activated setup. As R1 pulls, R3 pushes, and vice versa. This setup is also temperature compensated because of the presence of opposing strain gauges. As you can see, increasing the number of strain gauges in a differentially activated setup increases the sensitivity of the Wheatstone bridge to changes in length. Double differentially activated strain gauges increase the sensitivity even more. Don't forget temperature compensation is important. Ideally, the temperature dependence is canceled out in strain gauge pairs like in this example. I'm sure you're all set to tackle any future Wheatstone Bridge problems. I believe in you.